and gentlemen today we will discuss in short hopefully about how to wait for god's blessings how to wait for god's help because many times things get very difficult in our lives and that time we end up thinking that maybe there's nobody or maybe somebody is there but they are still not there for me <laughs> all right so today we will discuss from the shrimad bhagavatam from the mahabharat basically which is also linked to the shrimad bhagavatam by seeing the example of the great bhishma pitama we will see uh, in his life that how he waited endlessly it was like a never ending wait for him my god all right because he was in a very serious predicament much 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 more than what you or me can ever come into all right we may have problems we may have a ton of problems a dozen <laughs> truck load of problems but we will probably and luckily and hopefully never ever have that many problems that this person had all right so there you go if you are new to the channel and if you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who also wants to know that how to wait till god's hand comes upon us all right and yes if you want a consultation from me then you can go down to my website below you will find the link in the desk in the description section of my videos and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him and not only we will find him you will also see his hand all right so we all know from the mahabharat this character mahabharat is basically what it is the story of bhishma pitama in one way yes he was the son of the great 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 shantanu maharaj and goddess ganga that is why he is often referred in the mahabharat and in the shrimad bhagavatam as ganga putra which means the son of ganga he is also referred as shantanu putra so he was the eighth vasu actually who all these eight vasus they had got a curse and that's a long story i will not go to that but he as soon as he was born then ganga devi she told shantanu that you violated the promise which you had given me you had promised me that you will never ask me any question but ganga devi had thrown seven of her sons into the river ganga <laughs> because she wanted to deliver these seven vasus from their curse which they had got but this last vasu whose name was deo he he had uh, to some extent a more challenging karma because he was the leader of the vasus when they were doing something wrong against a rishi and deo had the predicament to suffer much more okay so this deo is actually bhishma pitama so when uh, when shantanu uh, saw that ganga is going to throw the eighth child also then he was mortified and then he could not stop he said stop you cruel lady you are going on throwing your own sons into the river how can a mother do this and then she said i am not throwing my sons actually <laughs> they are the vasus and now this vasu who is deo have to he has to stay here in this particular world because the earlier seven vasus as soon as they were born they died because ganga devi had thrown them into water and then they went back to the heavens vasus are the assistant gods in the higher higher planetary cosmos like they are like the subordinates to the demigods to the devatas and because of that uh, deo who was devrat who is bhishma had to stay he had to live an entire life and because uh, because of some reason he also had to follow celibacy so then bhishma pitama oh sorry i mean devrat when he was a kid then ganga devi said to the shantanu as soon as uh, shantanu stopped her that now i will return to the heavens because it's over now so then what happened shantanu he was such a great personality that he was not thinking that oh will i be able to see the childhood of my son or not 
He was not thinking of all this. He said, "You are you are going to the higher planetary systems. You are going to the heavens. There are great personalities like Brihaspati. There is Narad Muni. There is Shukracharya. There are so many great personalities. Parshuram is there. Yes. So you can take this child and you can." uh give him training under all these great personalities he will be a matchless personality once he comes and then many years pass by and suddenly one day shantaru maharaj he sees that there's a young beautiful gentleman out there and he he, he was so powerful that by using his bow and arrow he was chanting divine mantras and he was invoking celestial weapons and by that he stopped the flow of the river ganga and shantaram maharaj was like what <laughs> this young boy i mean he's not a warrior he's just like <laughs> a teenage boy and he he's so powerful that he has stopped the flow of the ganga river the ganga is so powerful it's so fast it's so it's so broad who can do this but as soon as shantaru maharaj saw him shantaru maharaj felt some desire inside he he got a feeling maybe that uh, this is not a ordinary person why do i feel that i know him very closely i feel as if he's a part of me only <laughs> okay so then shantaru maharaj he was thinking oh if my son would be there he would of he would be of this same age you know maybe that's why i am feeling that much attraction towards him and then he goes and challenges this young boy he says how dare you stop the flow of the river ganga and then ganga devi she appeared and said my dear great shantanu maharaj he is none other than your son he is devrat yes so i have taken him to the heavens as promised and i have given him training under brihaspati under shukracharya under narad muni under parshuram parshuram is his martial teacher all the great sages, sages kashyap vishwamitra they have all taught him yes there is no living being in the entire universe who can challenge him he is unstoppable he is unbeatable he is un all uns you and <laughs> he was like he was matchless he was young he was handsome he was beautiful he was radiant he was glorious he was effulgent he was intelligent he was uh, no words <laughs> so his name was devrat and then shantanu maharaj saw that devrat has all the qualities of becoming the prince and the successive king of course so then devrat was coined as the yuvraj yuvraj means the pr- the one who is going to sit in the throne after the demise of shantanu maharaj so he declared that devrat will be the next king and everybody all the citizens they unanimously supported shantanu maharaj because they were they were also wanting that a personality like devrat should be the king but then later on as we all know shantaram maharaj he became attached to satyavati and satyavati uh, father had a condition that my daughter's son or her lineage should rule but till the time uh, devrath is there her sons cannot rule because after devrath dies his son will become the king so then uh, he devrath heard heard this and devrath said if that is the case i promise you i will never marry and then of course satyavati's father also did not want that you know there is future collision between uh, bhishma's sons and satyavati's son so bhishma first of all said that if that is the problem then i will not sit in the throne and then satyavati's father said that you may not sit but your son may want to sit he said if that is the case then i take a vow that i will not marry i will not have kids 
and that vow is known as bhishma pratigya pratigya is vow and bhishma means something which is very great which is like which is majestic which is very powerful which is very divine very strong so now the interesting thing is there are many sages saints rishis and sanyasis who take the vow of celibacy like bhishma took that i will not marry and i will dedicate my whole life towards spirituality but uh, nobody comes and says that they are bhishma yes why but why was devrath appreciated so much the demigods appeared in the sky and they were showering flowers because it is relatively easier to be a celibate a monk or a renunciate by leaving everything and going to the forest and it is also easy to stay in the palace and marry and lead a spiritually oriented family life but to stay in royalty and then be a celibate oh my god that is impossible because you are all the time surrounded by queens and chatriya queens are extremely beautiful and they may be beautiful or they may not be but the point is the other kings who are there in your vicinity they are all married and they are enjoying and you see them enjoying you see a man and a woman that you know they are having uh, loving or sweet exchanges then it becomes very difficult to follow celibacy so that is why he is always glorified so then later on we all know how the mahabharat proceeded that finally it ended in a fratricidal war between the pandavas and the kurus and bhishma pitama tried his best to stop this but ultimately all his efforts in vain so now there is a question which is asked that and yes by the way bhishma is one of the 12 mahajans it is mentioned in the shrimad bhagavatam all right who mentions this yamaraj himself mentions this to the yamadutas swayam bhuna radha shambhu kumaro kapilo manu prahlado janako bhishma balir vaya sakhi vayam yamaraj is telling the name of 11 personalities and he says we that means he is included in that mahajans great personalities okay and the bhagavatam also says mahajano yena gata sapanta which means we should follow in the footsteps of the mahajans and they are the ultimate authorities when it comes to spiritual knowledge their life their activities their actions their words their behavior these are so exemplary that they set the standard of spiritual life okay so if you want to know what spiritual life is how to practice spirituality just look at the life of these personalities all right so now the point is he is one of the 12 mahajans but he surprisingly fights on the side of the kurus who are on the side of adharma and of course bhishma once also took a vow that whoever is uh, the ruling king i will see the image of my father shantanu maharaj in in him and i will serve him as a servant loyally and i will also not leave my body till the time i feel that there is a uh there's a deserving king for hastinapur okay so till that time i will not leave my body and we all know when bhishma took that great vow that he will not marry then shantanu maharaj his father he was so much he felt that my son has given my given his whole life just for my pleasure so i must bless him and then shantanu maharaj he was also not an ordinary personality he could bless abundantly so shantanu maharaj blessed bhishma that till the time you do not want death personified will not come near you you will only die where you want how you want at the hands of whom otherwise nobody can kill you impossible only when you wish that you die you will die okay so that was known as the ichchan mrityu and later on bhishma he he fights on the side of the kurus although they are on the side of adharma a religion but the question is why does he do that now in india there are many people who do not understand this reason okay 
So there are many people, if you go to villages, if you go to Mathura, Vrindavan, Kanchipuram, you go to Varanasi, all these places. Sometimes you attend Bhagavad Saptas there. Okay, so in many of those places, they will say, Oh, actually why, you know, he fought because Bhishma was a bit corrupted. Corrupted, I mean, not literally, but he used to stay with all these, you know, crooked people like... Duryodhan, headed by Dushasan, Karna and Shakuni, these four culprits of the Mahabharata. So, he also became kind of, you know, corrupted. He also was like, anyways, I have to stay with them, you know, they pay me. So, I have to listen to what they say. And some say that actually he was old and he was confused. Well, this is all nonsense. Alright? He is one of the twelve margins. He can never be confused. He can never be tired. He can never not know what is the truth. So, he knew very well that Kurus are uh, the pillars of Adharma. Yes, these four personalities just who I mentioned. But still, he fought. Why? Because he, now see, that's very interesting. For eternity to come, his name is written with the villains. Yes. Who would want that? Everybody wants to be in the good books, right? <laughs> Nobody wants to be in the bad books, right? Nobody wants to be in the books with the villains. Everybody wants to be with the heroes. So, he knew that people will insult me. They will denigrate me. They will try to uh, say that I was old. I was confused. I did something wrong. But still he fought on the side of the Kurus. Why? The reason is very simple. The reason is because Lord Krishna wanted to show to the entire universe. And yes, by the way, he had also defeated Parshuram once upon a time. Okay, Bhishma. And Parshuram is his teacher, his guru. But there was a conflict because of which he had defeated Parshuram also. So he is like, there is nobody like him in fighting. So, Lord Krishna wanted to demonstrate to the entire world that even if you are a personality like Bhishma, whoever you are, you are somebody like Drona. Drona was also a disciple of Parshuram, just like Bhishma. Even if you are like, if you are so powerful like Drona and Bhishma, if you stand against me, you will fall. You will not keep standing very long. Okay, so that's the reason why. Krishna wanted that Bhishma fights on the side of the Kurus. And Bhishma, because he is a great devotee, he is a Mahajan inside, he knows Krishna's heart. He knows that Krishna wants that I fight on that side. He knows this. <laughs> you may think that, oh, what's this game, double game going on, you know. He knows, I know, but <laughs> that's how it happens. At the spiritual level. So just because he was standing against Krishna. It doesn't mean that he was actually against. Because on the first day of the Kurukshetra war. When Yudhishthir Maharaj goes and asks him. That please bless me. He says Vijay Bhava. May you be victorious. And many places. Uh, Bhishma always tries to glorify Krishna. Yes. And finally, we know what happens. Uh, Shikhandi goes into the chariot of Arjuna and then Arjuna uh, fills Bhishma's body with a, with so many arrows that they say, say that there was no space for one finger to go inside. Yes. Like there are arrows inside this finger also. It's like that. You cannot put a finger also. There are so many arrows in his body. So then he fell from his chariot and he was residing he was resting in the Kurukshetra battlefield and he used to get all this all the news from the Kurukshetra battlefield that Bhima has killed uh, so many of the Kurus yes finally Abhimanyu is killed then so many others and at the end Dushasan is killed and finally, Duryodhan also perishes. So, can you imagine? You may have problems in your life. Like, 
somebody was telling me that their sons are fighting for property well how many sons you have one two three four five do you have 105 sons no of course the pandavas and the kauravas were his grandsons of course but grandsons are also like sons and they were quarreling of course the pandavas never quarreled but the gurus were hellbent on uh, showing that we are superior to you and they had committed so many atrocities yes especially against the pandavas and draupadi and kunti also so he had to see all this politics he knew very well what is going on he knew each and every word of it and he tried his best to stop things he tried his level best whatever he could do he gave the best advice to dhritarashtra the king but he never listened dhritarashtra only listened to what duryodhan would say what karna would say what shakuni would say and what dushasan would say so he would always ignore the good advice given by vidura who was his step brother and dronacharya and bhishma so apart from these three he listened to everybody he even ignored what ved vyas advised and now comes the most important part he bhishma pitama he after the kurukshetra war was over then for so many days he was just lying and we know when gita jayanti comes right it's in december when krishna spoke the gita to arjuna it's in december every year so imagine that time the battlefield of kurukshetra how cold it is yes and bhishma was not eating anything he was not drinking anything he was just in the arrow bed <laughs> but he did not complain no complaints you have seen the vastra halan the disrobing of draupadi my god he he ideally he should have died because he is such a great personality he also tried to stop that but somehow by uh, krishna's divine will he also uh, doesn't uh, protest too much during the draupadi's vastra halan because again krishna wanted to demonstrate that i am the ultimate protector even if there are personalities like drona and bhishma it could happen that you still uh, don't get protection from them it could happen but the point is he saw all this yes and the kauravas were having a great time when draupadi was being disrobed duryodhana pressed his thighs yes and he said Oh Draupadi please come and sit in my thigh. Yes. And that time Bhima took a vow that you have you have invited Draupadi to sit on your thighs. I take a vow that I will break those thighs and I will rip you apart completely. And then Duryodhana's best friend Karna he said anyways Draupadi you have five husbands you know. So if you have one more husband so what is the problem you know panch ka che ho jaye to kya ho jayega koi dikkat nahi hai usme and then dushasan he uh, he tried to uh, he he tried to uh, disrobe her and insult her to the highest possible capacity that any man can insult a woman and we all know what happened to these three yes how they met their end in the kurukshetra war in the hand of arjuna and bhima of course justice was served to draupadi by the killing of these three but the point was bhishma was seeing all this can you just believe it oh my god it's insane to see somebody like draupadi being disrobed and that too when she is your own family member he saw all this he tried to stop but he couldn't and he lived in regret after all this my god it's insane then your grandsons fighting like cats and dogs they are quarreling duryodhana is hell bent i will not give them any property never and one after the other bad news keeps coming today he is dead tomorrow he is dead and once the kurukshetra battle is over he stays he still stays he doesn't die 
Bhishma Vitama, he was waiting till the time Krishna comes and appears in front of him. Bhishma did not demand. Once upon a time, somebody told me that his wife was a great devotee of one of the gods in India and now she has become an atheist because she said that whenever I called God, he never came. All right. So, if we have any intention of making 0.0001% progress in our spiritual life, we have to stop demanding things from God. We have to be humble. If humility is not there, there is nothing which you have. So, Bhishma, he was having this mortifying pain in his body. Can you imagine? No, don't pretend you can. I can't. Nobody can imagine the pain which he was having in his body, in his mind, in his soul after seeing all this. But he did not complain. He did not say, Why are you so cruel, Providence? Why are you so cruel, O Krishna? He did not say, I am one of the twelve Mahajans. Don't you know why are you giving me so much suffering? People always ask this. Like, once I was reading an article where after the world war, most of the ladies in Germany, they became atheists. Why? Because... Uh, the Russian ladies were praying to God, please kill the Germans. And the German ladies were praying to God, that please kill the Russians. All right. And then we know what happened. The Red Army came and demolished. And they raped hundreds and thousands and lakhs and millions of German women. And that's known as the rape of Europe. We all know that. So the German ladies, they said that if God exists, then why did he let this happen to us? Well, you will select a fascist man like Hitler and that time you don't think of God and when the damage is done then you will think of God right so Bhishma exemplifies this quality not to demand things not to demand God that please help actually there's no please <laughs> how can you arrogantly say please help me suppose you say please help me <laughs> you're not saying please you are instructing you are ordering that person and then one fine day lord krishna he was meditating and yudhishthir maharaj went to lord krishna and he saw that krishna is meditating but he was like oh krishna please tell me who are you meditating upon <laughs> and then krishna was still meditating he did not open his eyes this is after the kurukshetra war is over and then Yudhishthira Maharaj realized that Krishna is in deep meditation. But Yudhishthira Maharaj was thinking that the whole universe is meditating upon you because you are only Lord Vishnu. Yes. Who are you meditating upon? And then Yudhishthira Maharaj, he became very humble and he crossed his hands in prayers and he, he was uh, requesting Lord Krishna that, Oh Krishna, could you please tell me about who are you thinking? Who is that personality who is... On your mind right now. And that time Lord Krishna opened his eyes. And with a beautiful serene smile in his face. He said. O best of the Pandavas Yudhishthir Maharaj. Dharmaraj Yudhishthir of course. <laughs> I am thinking about that great Bhishma. Who is still lying down in the battlefield of Kurukshetra. Even after the war is over. Okay. So now is the time that we must go to him. And then Krishna instructs Draupadi and the Pandavas to dress in the best of the best of the best royal garments. And then let us go to Bhishma, he says. And then Krishna along with uh, Pandavas and Draupadi, they all go to Bhishma Pitama. And when Bhishma sees that the Pandavas are dressed so beautifully in royal attire, he is extremely happy. Now he knows that the kingdom of Hastinapur is in right hands. Yes, headed by Yudhishthir Maharaj himself. I mean, who else could be there better than him? So, in that, in that situation, Krishna, Krishna says to Bhishma that now is the time that you will speak on religion you will speak on politics you will speak on spirituality you will speak on how to be a good king how to be a good human being and Bhishma says that 
when you are there how can i speak it's not possible <laughs> because you are the reservoir of all knowledge because krishna says in the gita that from all the vedas i am to be known vedesh cha sarve ahameva vedyo vedanta kritve davi deva cha aham krishna says this in the gita and then krishna says well if you say i am god then i am ordering you you must speak <laughs> krishna wanted to show how great this personality is there is nobody there is nobody there is nobody greater than this personality there is there was there cannot be <laughs> and then krishna he says and then bhishma says that oh actually you know i have become old and i am having this pain because all these arrows they are sucking my blood and then krishna says if that is the problem now i give you a blessing that you will not feel any pain or any hunger or any thirst and your intelligence will be as sharp as it was during your youth o bhishma now speak and when he gives this blessing to bhishma then bhishma's memory is instilled again he speaks like thunder as if the rains are about to pour yes so his voice was like a crackling thunder and he speaks for how many days well some say he spoke for 48 days some say 49 days some say 52 days okay so for these many days he speaks and ultimately one fine day when the sun has entered capricorn makara rashi yes that's makar sankranti that time bhishma he contemplates lord krishna's activities his leelas in vrindavan and with the gopas and the gopis and how krishna on the ninth day of the kurukshetra war took that wheel of the chariot and he ran towards bhishma bhishma says i just need one thing in 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 my consciousness is i just want to keep remembering that footage that you ran towards me you wanted to kill me <laughs> <laughs> but somehow arjuna stopped stopped you so that footage is playing in my head again replay yes again and again and again and again that's happening so may i just remember that and by seeing krishna's face and in the assembly of all the great sages and the rishis who had assembled because of bhishma's departure bhishma ascended to the higher realms and he went back to the spiritual world never ever to return back into this material world and the sages saw that a beautiful spark had come out of bhishma's body and it disappeared into lord krishna's body so they understood that he had obtained mukti moksha the highest form of uh, the highest uh, position which anybody could obtain yes and that's how this great personality lived so he never demanded that god where are you why don't you come you must come see i am here you must listen to me no he didn't do that <laughs> even after the war was over he was still lying there he was like only when god wants to come he will come maybe <laughs> all the great personalities exemplify this arjuna exemplifies this hanuman ji exemplifies this kunti exemplifies this draupadi exemplifies this dhruva maharaj exemplifies this prahlad maharaj exemplifies this all right this is just one example which i am giving all right so this is how we should be and always remember whoever you are the problems that you face or that you had faced or the ones you are facing or the ones you will face in future will nowhere be in comparison to what bhishma pitama faced okay so he sets the standard that is why he is one of the 12 mahajans okay so now let us behave or let's try to behave like he behaved all right we may not be able to behave like him that's not possible because he is like he is he <laughs> we cannot replicate who he is but we can at least try to follow in his footsteps yes depending on our capacity there you go ladies and gentlemen if you are new then please like comment share and subscribe and click the thumbs up and if you want a consultation from me then please go to my website down below god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him